All right. So we have seen that integers and polynomials behave rather similarly. You know, they're quite similar. You know, we can define addition and multiplication and division and the division algorithm, the Euclidean algorithm, all those stuff. They are very similar. Now we want to abstract these two sets into you know to extract some something essential between them so what defines them in particular are addition and multiplication those are bi two binary operators that are commonly found in those two sets okay and if these addition and multiplication they satisfy a certain set of rules or axioms, then we say they are a ring. Ring. So it's it's not this ring, but uh, it, it has some meaning related to association of things or people. Okay. Now let's define this. Let R be a non-empty set in which there are defined two binary operations called addition and multiplication. Okay, so addition we write A plus B. Of course, A and B are elements of this set R. But no, you know this plus sign here. This has at this moment it has nothing to do with the addition of numbers you know this is just a symbol we could have written with any other symbols like circles triangles or whatever like some strange shape you know we could have written like a this b or anything right but we just happen to use this plus sign Okay, so at this moment, this plus sign doesn't mean anything. We just call this addition, but what does addition mean? That meaning is not given yet. So that is defined by the following axioms. And also, we define product, no product, of A by B, and we write like AB. So sometimes we write A dot B. Sometimes we write a times b. For simplicity, we often write a b. Okay, but this dot or cross, you know, they don't mean anything. It, it's just symbol. Okay, and also a and b, they are not necessarily numbers. So they are, they could be just symbols or anything. You know, a could be like orange, b could be grapefruits, whatever. Or elephant, monkeys. So, the meaning of addition or sum or product, multiplication or product, are given by the axioms, okay, which we will explain now. So, first, axioms of addition. First of all, if A and B are elements of this set R, then the result of the addition, the sum, a plus b, is also an element of this set, r. So that means if you add, so add, it doesn't go out, the result of addition doesn't go out of this set. Okay? This property is called closure. So this operation is closed under addition. So that's how we use the language here. Okay, closure. Second, if A and B and C are elements of this set, then we first add A and B, then add C, or we first add B and C, then add A, then they should be equal. This, is, this property is called associativity. Okay, associate, you know, associative. So we say this, uh, this set is associative, or addition is associative. 
Okay. And third, there exists a distinguished element denoted by zero. Okay. We happen to use this symbol, but this zero has nothing to do with the number zero as a number. Okay. This is just a symbol. We could have written by any other symbol. So this it but what we want to say here is there is a special type of element that uh, behaves like this. For any element of this set, let's say a, so a plus 0 is equal to 0 plus a, which is equal to a. Okay. So it's like adding 0 to any element doesn't change that element. Okay, so this the meaning of this symbol is defined by this behavior. Okay, so in other words, anything that satisfy this condition can be considered as a zero. Okay, so there can be multiple zeros. So, but we'll show that it. Actually, this zero is unique. Okay, but we will do that later. Now, fourth, for any element a of this set R, there exists an element denoted by minus a. Okay, again, this minus sign here is just a symbol. Okay, it has nothing to do with the negative sign of numbers. This just happens to be written like this. Okay, we could have written any other ways, like you know, as long as this element. So let's say let's call it B. So this corresponds to a certain element A. For any element, there exists an another element, some specific element, which is defined by this behavior. Okay, for the moment, let's call it minus A. So a plus minus a is equal to minus a plus a, which is equal to 0. So this 0 is the 0 defined in the previous axiom. Okay. And fifth, for all pairs of elements, let's say a and b, a, and a plus b is equal to b plus a. So we can swap the order of addition. Yeah, it's called commutativity, commutative of addition. Okay. Or oh, the previous property is called inverse of addition. Okay. Those are the axioms of addition. Now let's go to the axioms of multiplication. Okay. There are only two here. For all pairs. Of element, elements, a b is again an element of that set. Okay, so the multiplication is closed under, uh, is closed within this set. Or, or we'll say this set is closed under multiplication. Okay, so if you multiply two elements of the set. The result does not go out of the set. Okay, that makes sense. And if A and B and C are elements of the set, then first multiply AB, then multiply C is equal to first multiply BC and multiply A from the left. Okay, this C is multiplied from the right. So these are equal. So the multiplication here is associative. Okay, this is associativity of multiplication. So these are the axioms of addition and axioms of multiplication. And these two operations, addition and multiplication, are related to each other by the axioms of distributivity. Okay, for A, B, C, uh, B plus C multiplied from the left by A 
is equal to a b plus a c. Okay. And a plus b multiplied by c from the right is equal to a c plus b c. Okay. Now let's explain each of these a little bit more. So So this is closed under addition and otherwise it doesn't make sense. And associativity means uh, how we add three things doesn't matter. So we just write this as a plus b plus c without any parenthesis because you know the order of you know, addition doesn't matter whether we for this first or this first and as for this zero element this is actually unique you know it doesn't say it is unique but uh, this very behavior defines this to be unique okay what this means is this so let's say if we have two zero elements okay Again, you know, these are just symbols and they are just defined by their behaviors. So what is the behavior of this? So for all elements of R, A plus 0 is equal to 0 plus A is equal to A, right? So if we say this 0 prime is a 0 of this set, then we should have the same behavior, right? a plus 0 prime is equal to 0 prime plus a is equal to a. Okay? So now, it's, this is 1, this is 2. Okay, let's pick this first relation. Let's say, since this holds for any a elements, right? So let's say this is a prime, a 0 prime. Then we have uh, okay, 0 prime plus 0 is equal to 0 plus 0 prime is equal to 0 prime, right? Then in the second relation, let's say a is equal to 0. Okay, then we have 0 plus 0 prime and 0 prime plus 0 is equal to 0. So, this is equal to this, same thing, right? And this is same thing, right? So that means this is equal to this, vice versa. So, therefore, these 0 and 0 prime, they are actually equal. So that means if there are two zeros which behave like zeros, then they are actually the same element. And about this uh, inverse of addition, we say this I there exists an element. Okay, we just happen to write as minus a for each a. Okay, so there can be multiple elements that satisfy this behavior, right? So let's say, okay, let's say. For A, let's pick one element A. Suppose B and B prime are its inverse of addition. Okay, so since B is the inv an inverse of A, then it should satisfy that behavior axiom, right? So a plus b is equal to b plus a is equal to 0. Okay? And since b prime is also an inverse, so we should have a plus b prime is equal to b prime plus a is equal to 0. 
okay now b is equal to b plus 0 right this is from the the axiom of 0 adding 0 doesn't change b okay but this 0 okay this 0 is equal to this for example so b plus a plus b prime it's you know this is same as zero from the associativity we can move the parentheses like b plus a plus b prime but b plus a is zero so this is zero so this is zero plus b prime but zero plus b prime is just b prime by the axiom of 0. So therefore, after all, we have b equal to b prime. So if there are two inverses of the same element, those two inverses must be identical to each other. So we can say the inverse of an element. OK. So we explain this, explain this. Ah, okay. And also, so for each a, we have its inverse minus a, and of course there is an inverse for minus a, which is actually a itself, because you know this satisfies this this equation is satisfied, right? So if you look at this, then this a should be its inverse. So that means inverse of minus a is a. Okay. And often we write a minus a to mean a plus minus b. Okay. So there is no such thing as subtraction per se. You know, this apparently this is subtraction, but uh, it's just a shorthand notation for this addition. Okay. So all we have here is this addition, not subtraction per se. Okay. And this commutativity of addition is given as an axiom but if you notice there is no commutativity axiom for multiplication okay so if you look at this uh, definition axiom there is no commutativity for multiplication here so that means a b may not be equal to b a okay this is not required for a ring okay can you think of any example like this? For example, in the case of matrices, you know you cannot change the order of product of matrices. Right? A B is not necessarily equal to B A. In fact, the set of matrices can be considered as a ring. Uh, we will see those examples later. Okay, then well, let's see another example of a ring. So let x be a set. So x is a set and we have a set, have the set of real numbers and consider all the mappings from x to r. Okay, then that is the set R, okay? So this set R is the set of all uh, functions, mappings from X to real numbers. Okay? Then, if we introduce addition and multiplication of these mappings, then this set can be considered as a ring. So let's define the 
the sum and product of uh, this set. So let f and g be mappings from x to real numbers. The addition is defined like this. Okay. So here, this f plus g here, this plus sign is a definition, a def is a def defined by this right hand side. Okay f of x is a real number it's a real number okay it's a result of application of this function to x and this g of x is of course a real number so this addition here on the right hand side is the addition between two real numbers now it's just the usual addition of numbers but this addition on the left hand side here is not an addition of numbers, it's addition of two functions. Okay? This is how we define the addition between two functions. So for all x, this should hold. Okay? So at each point x, we define addition. And for multiplication, we define like this. So this dot is a multiplication between two functions or mappings. Okay? But this dot here on the right hand side is just an ordinary multiplication between two real numbers. This is a real number. This is a real number. So this is just a multiplication of real numbers. Okay. Now, we can check that this set of mappings from x to real numbers is a ring. Let's check this. Uh, first, this set R is closed under addition. Okay. So, if we define f plus g in this way, this is a new function from x to real numbers, right? This f plus g, this is a new function. Okay, This is a function from x to real numbers. So, that means this addition uh, results in the same set. So, this r is closed under addition. Okay. And associativity also holds. If f and g and h are elements of this set R, okay, let's check this. So f plus g first, then add h. So this is an element of R. So by the by the definition of this addition, we first add f plus g of x okay, plus h of x so this addition is addition between two real numbers okay this addition is addition between two functions okay then apply the definition of addition to this this term to have this now we have addition of three real numbers and from the associativity of real numbers we have this equality. Okay? First add f of x plus g of x, then add h of x. This is equal to first add g of x plus h of x, then add f of x. Now this is associativity of real numbers. Then apply the definition of addition between two functions. We have g plus h of x here. Then again, apply the definition of addition between functions. We have f plus g plus h. So after all, this is equal to this. So associativity holds. Okay. Next, uh, 
that zero element is given by this particular mapping. Okay. Again, don't confuse this zero with a number zero as a number. So on the right hand side, this zero is just a real number. Zero as a real number. Okay. On the left hand side, this zero is a name of a function, of a particular function, which is a constant function that gives only the value of zero for any input. Okay. Now, this function behaves like the zero element of this set R. Okay, to check this, you know, just check the behavior as, a, as zero. Okay, f plus zero uh, it, by the definition of the additional functions, we have this, but the def by the definition of this zero function, this part is just zero as a real number. But adding zero, real number zero doesn't change this f of x, but this is equal to zero plus f of x, but this zero constant zero is equal to this function zero. And by applying the ad, uh, definition of addition of functions, this is zero plus f. Now this zero is the function. Okay. So what we have is this f plus zero is equal to f, which is equal to zero plus f. So this function zero of x behaves as the zero element of this set R. Okay, now check the additive inverse of a function f. And let's define this, uh, uh, the inverse of this as this, minus f of x is equal to minus f of x. Okay, uh, if you just listen to this sentence, it's confusing. But this first minus f of x, this minus f is the function, is the name of the function. Okay. That is defined by this function. Okay. This f of x is already given here. Okay. So it's a real number. So multiply that with negative 1, you have another real number. So for each x, we assign this number. as its value. So this is the definition of uh, of the of the additive inverse. To check this, to check if this indeed satisfy the axiom of the additive inverse, just try that. Okay, what was the requirement? Okay, that's an exercise. Okay, and it's also easy to check the commutativity. Okay, just check this holds for each x. Okay, then check the axioms of multiplication. Okay, for each f and g, uh, its its product is closed. Uh, its product is an element of this R. It's you know this f dot g is a function from x to real numbers still, right? So that means f dot g belongs to R. And we can also check these uh, distributive laws by checking this uh, equality holds for each x. So after all, so please t uh, do this yourself. So after all, this set R, the set of mappings from x to real numbers, is a ring. Okay.